Today we review the Kodak Beefy Max. A lot of you have waited patiently for this review, thank you. I've been riding this for two weeks. I really wanted to get to know it before I just hopped on it and gave an initial review and then sent it back because I really want to get to know this bike and I do that with all of my bikes. I really try to get to know them before reviewing them. Put a lot of miles on this and today we are riding Highline Trail in Sedona. I don't take very many review bikes on this trail because most hardtails I don't feel comfortable riding on this trail. This is a very special bike as you will find out in the review. I really like it. 444 chainstay, 438 reach, 65 degree head angle on this 140 Cane Creek helm. This bike rides far different than its geo table suggests. I'm five foot six. I'm on a size small. I have a BMX racing background as a kid. I've been mountain biking for 20 years. In the past, whenever I've ridden a bike with chain stays longer than 435, it's kind of felt like a boat, like you're towing a trailer. Hard to get into manuals, hard to bunny hop and play. So when I saw this one had 444, I was a little worried, but I kept an open mind and decided to see how it rode before I let that number change my perceptions and I'm glad I did. For some reason, despite the long chainstay numbers, this bike does not feel long. It feels very maneuverable. I can put it where I want. I can lift up the back wheel when I want. Reach feels slightly shorter than the numbers suggest. It feels like a 430 reach to me, not a 438. Man, this bike excels on the climbs, which I did not expect. This has quickly become one of my favorite technical climbing bikes, which totally blew me away. That is such a hard move there. This is hard to do in one pull. What else is crazy is how light and snappy this bike feels. This bike is an absolutely incredible climber. One of the top two bikes I've ever ridden for climbing. On the power moves especially, it's fantastic. Usually long chainstay bikes, I'm awful in the chunky stuff. But like I said, this doesn't ride like it's as long as it is. I think calling this the Beefy is a disservice. Beefy bikes like the Cro-Mag Root Down, the RSD Middle Child, the Kona Hanzo, these steel, overbuilt hardcore bikes feel overbuilt. Yes, it's beefy, it has aggressive geometry and it's strong, but it doesn't ride like an overbuilt bike. And that is part of the magic of this thing. This has a very alive feel. It's not the most supple hardtail I've ridden, but it's definitely stiff in the right places. It doesn't beat you up, but it has a springiness to it. It's, it's, it just feels alive and they've been able to keep it light. That's what's crazy. This bike's like the kid that shows up to the first wrestling meet that's super scrawny and everyone's got low expectations and then he just throws it down on the mat and takes the state title and you're just like, holy cow. Just really surprises you how hard of a punch this thing packs. This thing is spry, it is peppy, it is fun to ride. This is what a good steel frame should feel like. You can get more supple steel frames. So if you were crushing out long miles or looking for more XC stuff, I'd recommend a different model. And I think Kodak would as well. But this is the most lively slash energetic slash supple is the wrong word, but comfortable, aggressive, hardcore bike I've ridden yet. It's right up there with my Banshee Paradox. So far I've cleaned everything first try on these climbs and that's not normal for me. The reason I do long reviews is because there's so little info about a lot of these bikes and I figure the more info you have, the better you can make decisions about whether it's for you or not. This bike has incredible balance at slow speeds despite the 65 degree head angle. And despite the 51 mil offset fork, I, if this were my bike, I'd get a 44 mil offset. The handling's just a little bit twitchier on the 51. I don't like a twitchy front end. 
It initiates corners well. It tips into the lean angle quickly with the 51 mil. This bike is a great wheelier. What's surprising is I don't have to lift the front wheel very high to find the sweet spot on the wheelie. It's far more playful than it should be for a 444 chainstay, but it's less playful than something like a chameleon or the middle child or even my banshee. This is meant to be an enduro winning hardtail. And that sounds silly, but in the UK, they do have hardtail enduro classes, which I think is awesome. What amazes me is the balance on this bike. This just always feels like you're perfectly balanced left and right. Seat tube angle feels perfect. Seated position is perfect. For once, I'm not sliding my seat rails forward. The reach feels short. So this is where the geo charts feel different than I think. The chainstay feels shorter than the geo chart says, but the reach feels shorter too. And since Kodak has such a low seat tube height, I could definitely size up to a medium and still have plenty of seat post. Appreciate them doing that. Yeah, what a joy to ride. This bike rides quite different from any other bike I've reviewed. And I've really struggled to put it into words. I'm glad they've included this riser bar. I really like the feel and sweep of the bar. It's very comfortable. This is a Kodak bar and stem. They believe in short stems to match their geometry and I agree it fits it well. Some bikes throw on a 35 mil stem on ruins the feel. This bike feels just right. I think for the first time in my life, I've cleaned every techie section on this climb first try. It accelerates very quickly, like a lot of aluminum and carbon bikes, but it's noticeably less stiff than the DV9, the Santa Cruz Chameleon Carbon. Feels about like the Santa Cruz Chameleon Aluminum. A little bit stiffer under pedaling though. A little bit smoother than my Thai Middle Child, I'm impressed. And it feels zippier and less flexy than my Thai Middle Child. The helm fork feels fantastic. I love the helm. One of my favorite forks. I wish it rode slightly higher in its travel, but it sure is supple. Man, that's a plush fork. I can't believe I'm at the top already. That went by way fast. That's gotta be one of my fastest climbing times up this trail. Morning. All right, let's point this downhill, see what she feels like. The bars are close to me and low. I feel a little more forward than I want. Remember, the chainstay is six centimeters longer than my reach. That's kind of an awkward feeling when the back part feels longer than the front. But we got a nice slack head angle to keep that front tire out there in front of me. Even though the riding position feels a little bit like I want to go over the bars, it really doesn't because the wheel's so far out there. Oh, this is so good. This bike corners extremely well. Front end feels a little bit nervous slash floppy with that 51 mil offset, which sounds crazy because most people say shorter offset feels more floppy. This feels a little more twitchy. So you can still manual this bike. It takes more work than a short chain stay bike. This bike wants to stay fairly planted and just charge. The faster you go, the faster it wants you to go. This thing is so composed on the chunk. Yeah, the faster you go, the more it wants to be pushed. This is a very racy bike. Have fun on this. It's 
still rides like a hardtail. You feel the bumps. What a good bike. See how she does on the steep stuff. There's the line. Yeah, I'd like a longer reach on that really steep stuff. Maybe 15, 20 mil. So I'd size up to a medium. But that's just a sizing issue for me. So I would, if you have steep terrain or fast terrain, I would size up a little bit more than you normally do. Especially if you're pairing it with a small stem like this. Oh, this bike is a joy. It's weird, my first few rides on this, I felt like the front end was a little floppy. Like it was almost too slack. And I think most of that is due to the offset of the fork. But now that I'm used to it, I don't feel it. And I think a 140 fork is the sweet spot for this. 120 could be really fun too, but I think I'd get the Solaris Max if I wanted that. A lot of bike designers I've been talking to lately, I ask them what they do to build in compliance so the hardtail doesn't beat you up. And a lot of them say, we don't really factor that in, we just want it to be strong so that it doesn't break because we don't want people saying, don't buy bikes from company X, they break. And I can understand that, but it's disappointing because there are a lot of bike companies that do build in compliance and what a difference. So don't fall into the steel is real trap and think that all steel frames feel the same or even all Reynolds 853 frames feel the same. They're not going to. But Kodak did a good job tuning the ride of this bike. Here come the big moves. I buzzed my butt on the tire. The tire kind of smacked me in the butt there. This is loose. I don't like it. Ooh, that's gotten eroded. The bike is planted. Feels good. I've felt which is really interesting I haven't buzzed my butt on a back tire in months I buzzed it about three times there I'm not sure why that is definitely sat on the tire a few times weird it felt bigger than a 29er to me for some reason Solid pull top to bottom, baby. And that is Highline on the Kotic Beefy Max. Handled it extremely well. I felt like I had to get back more to avoid feeling like I was going over the bars. That's just a sizing issue for me. I cannot believe how good this balance is at low track stand speeds. It should not with its numbers. This just goes to show that geo charts only tell part of the story. This bike likes to jump, but it's a little bit slower jump than a short chain stay bike. This does not feel like a dirt jumper with the dropper at all like some bikes do. This feels like a downhill version of a hardtail.
this bike's very special. It falls in that exceptional category. It's not just like everything else. It's unique. What's surprising is how fun this is at slow speeds, in slow technical terrain, in big lift moves, hard climbs, punchy stuff. I recommend this bike for those who like bombing, going really fast down steep stuff, who like more of a racy enduro feel than just kind of a sit and spin cross country feel. Not to say you can't crush out the miles on this, you definitely can. I wouldn't put it as the top of my list for jib bikes where you just goof around and pop off every little thing at slow speed. This bike, I would probably say, is the best climber I've ever ridden. Whether it be long slogs on a fire road, howdy, or punchy stair steppy stuff like this. That is amazing. It'll claw its way up there. Wow, definitely felt the long chain stay helping me there. Wow, that, if you've ever been here, you know how hard that climb is. Only made it two or three times ever. And I just rolled into it talking. First try. This bike climbs so well, case in point. That was a special ride. That was amazing. This bike was built for Highline. Let's rate this bike. Climbing, 10 out of 10. I've never ridden a better climber. And for once, the longer chain stay helped on climbs. Normally, for some reason, it hurts. There's no doubt this new Hutchinson Griffiths super sticky tire helps as well, and that's a great match. You pair this with the zip wheels and the helm fork. Man, what a bike. Cornering, I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. I think if it had a 44 mil offset, it'd be a 10 out of 10. A great corner. Look at this. I've got a 150 post. And I could even raise that a little more. That never happens for me. So thank you for keeping that short, unlike so many companies. And thank you for a straight seat tube, Kodak. That means you could run super long droppers in there. Thank you for external routing. Love that. This frame was easy to build up. Thank you for the threaded bottom bracket. Descents, I'm gonna give this, I can't give it a very accurate rating because I feel like this bike was just slightly too small for me. What's crazy about this bike on the descents is you are going way faster than it feels. And you come into something really hot and you're like, I wasn't going that fast. And then you stop and look at it or talk to your buddies and they're like, you were hauling. This bike, you're going way faster than it feels like you do. And that's a compliment to the bike. You gotta remember you're on a hardtail and not just fly through stuff. So I wish it was a little bit longer. I should have sized up to a medium. The frame feels fantastic. This is how a steel frame should feel. Thank you Kodak for not overbuilding this frame. It feels light. It feels zippy. Now, if you're in the Midwest and you just ride flat stuff and there's no real chunk, I would go with one of Kodak's other models that hopefully rides even a little more supple and it's just a little bit less aggressive on the geometry. I highly recommend this bike if it fits your style, if you're doing faster terrain, more aggressive terrain, and by aggressive, I mean chunky, rocky, bumpy, steep, on the brakes, hard type of terrain. Um, not just kind of flowy, meandering terrain. It can do that, but I would probably recommend a different bike for that type of riding. Let's compare this to some other aggressive hardtails right now. The closest comparison is my Banshee Paradox V3. The longer chainstay is noticeable on this, and I think this climbs slightly better than the Paradox. Uh, the Paradox feels a little bit more comfortable going downhill. I'm not sure. I think it's a little bit longer reach. Compared to the RSD Middle Child, the Middle Child feels like a dirt jumper that just wants to play around on stuff. And the Middle Child steel feels overbuilt and heavy and not springy. It doesn't have the great ride quality that this does. This feels more, a little more like a race bike. Both are fast bikes. This is probably suited a little bit more for like enduro racing. I'd probably pick this. For dirt jumps, I'd pick the Middle Child. For Whistler, I'd pick this. Compared to the Diamondback Sinker Carbon, it has a similar feel in that it wants to charge and just bomb down hills. The Sinker felt slightly more composed than this, and I'm not quite sure why. I think the little bit lower stack kind of got to me, and I think I need a little more reach, and then I think this would beat the Sinker in that. This is still has a much better feel than the Sinker. It feels like a higher quality bike, 
and this climbs way better than the sinker. Santa Cruz Chameleon is completely different than this. Steeper head angle, twitchier, more BMXy, but they're not even in the same realm despite both being hardtails. I'm blown away, super fun bike. If you're tall or racing long steep stuff and more concerned about top speed and times, I think you're gonna really love this longer chain stay. It can be playful, but popping into manuals, bunny hops and jumps are a little bit harder on it than something with a shorter chain stay. So just decide if that's what you're looking for in a bike. Thank you, Kodak, for sending this. I'm honored to have been able to review this. If you guys enjoyed this review, subscribe and hit that bell icon. That'll notify you every time I publish a new video and you can be up to date on what I'm doing lately. If you want sneak peeks and to provide input into my videos and see the bikes I'm reviewing way before they hit YouTube, become a patron. I am super grateful for my patrons. You guys rock. Keep up the great suggestions over there. They're shaping what videos I film in the future and they get a lot of sneak peeks over there. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.